Today we're going over the ultimate guide to workout supplements where I'm going to break down everything I know about the most popular supplements and whether they're good, they're bad, they're ugly, they're in the middle, they're too slow, it doesn't matter. We're going to talk about them so you know if it's worth it or not. Starting it off with pre-workout. Pre-workout is one of those things where it does exactly what it says it does. It gives you a boost in performance and energy during your workouts. So yeah, if you like it, awesome. The only thing you have to worry about is if you're a coffee drinker in the morning and then you work out maybe after work or in the evenings and you take pre-workout, it's going to mess with sleep. So you got to find that balance. If there's another way you can get energy, maybe having some carbs before a workout instead if you're doing those evening workouts, then yeah. Or if you have coffee in the morning and you work out in the morning and you have pre-workout before your workout because you think you have to have pre-workout before your workout, that might not be good either because it just might be too much caffeine and it might just end up with uh, not a good experience if you continually do that for a long time. Uh, there's that meme on there where it just like finally catches up with you and you're just... Anyway, don't think that's going to happen. This is not, a, it's not like that bad, I don't think, but just you know, got to be cognizant of the total caffeine intake, diet sodas, caffeine from coffee, teas, pre-workout, of course, because it's all at once, and so on and so forth. So moving on to mass gainers. Now, this was a big, big thing in early 2000s, even late 90s, and probably a lot before, but I wasn't around that much longer before that. Anyway, so what we're talking about with mass gainer is essentially a scoop and usually it's like six scoops of carbs and protein and the smallest amount of dietary fat to help you absorb things a little bit better. And with those, it ends up being just a giant waste of money. Unless you are purely trying to thrive and survive off of convenience where you just mix it up and drink the chalky sludge just to get those calories in, there are better ways. You could just eat a meal like of food. And that's just my opinion, but I think generally speaking, it is a waste of money. And unless you're trying to get like gain fat as well, when people have this on top of their normal meals, it usually is a net negative, both financially and dietarily. So in my opinion, I'd completely avoid the mass gainers. Moving on to branch chain amino acids, AKA BCAAs. Let's just put it this way. A serving of hundred grams of beans, we're talking beans has 1.5 grams of BCAAs. Beans is like the one of the worst protein sources in terms of amino profiles and the quantity of protein you get per calorie that you consume. And even that has BCAAs. So meats, dairy, all these other things have tons of BCAAs. You do not need them. Whey protein, BCAAs. All it is is leucine, isoleucine, and valine. And those are amino acids that come in almost every protein source you can imagine. So you don't need to supplement with it. There's no extra benefit unless you're like severely deficit, uh, deficient in protein in general, then the solution for that would just be eat protein. So total waste of money on that, in my opinion. Next thing is creatine. Super good, well studied. 80% of people respond to it. There's cognitive benefits. There's muscular benefits. There's like overall output and energy benefits. There's a whole long laundry list of benefits. If you're not taking it, you probably should. But if you don't, it's not like you're really gonna miss out on anything long-term. You might get some immediate benefits, but that levels out pretty quick. So it really is up to you if you wanna use it or not. It's not gonna really make or break your exercise routines, but it does give you a little bit of a boost, but then that becomes your new normal as long as you keep taking it. At least, again, in my opinion. Now, moving on to fat burners. Essentially what they are is caffeine, and tree bark or a tree root, yohimbine, whatever it is. And all that really does is give you more caffeine, which we've already talked about being kind of an issue if you're doing coffee, like energy drinks, pre-workout, tea, diet sodas with caffeine, and then you're gonna do fat burner with caffeine in that as well. That's where it comes, it comes out to be a problem. And the only thing that it could really do is oxidize like the smallest micro scale amount of fat from the caffeine itself and maybe the tree bark or tree root. And at the end of the day, you'd be better off just focusing on being in a calorie deficit. But again, and I'll say it almost every single time, it's just my opinion based on all the research that I've read. Next thing is test boosters. Just, just no. I'm, you know, I'm not even gonna go further into it. No, it doesn't work. Okay, there are ways to boost testosterone, and that's not one of them. Uh, next thing is electrolyte drinks. Again, in my opinion, it is a total marketing ploy, and you're going to get electrolytes from eating food, and you can get hydration 
from eating food and drinking water. So all the calcium, magnesium, uh, like the, all the eums, the pota potassium. There's another one I can't re remember off the top of my head. You have those from food and then you drink water and that balances out in your body and wow, you're hydrated. If you have some carbs as well, you have some extra glycogen in the muscle, you'll have the fuel that you need to do what you need. But again, my opinion. But it is like a really big thing right now and I don't know why that is. It's like making a huge comeback. These electrolyte drinks are everywhere. Everyone thinks they need them for performance and all. I don't know. Kind of crazy to me, but it is what it is and it is where we are. I just don't think you need them. And then the last but definitely not least is protein powder it is the super easy, ultra mega convenient way of getting extra protein in your diet without spending a whole lot of time. Three minutes, put the scoop in the cup, water, milk, whatever it is, stir it up, chug it down. You got 20, 25, 30 grams of protein just like that. Maybe more if you're crazy and you have two scoops. And yeah, super easy. It's super cheap per gram of protein as well. So it's really hard to argue not using that if you struggle even in the slightest amount to not getting enough protein in your diet. Uh, but that's, that's the main ones I want to talk about today. I think that really sums up most of the ones that people talk about or think about from when I was working at a gym, uh, managing a gym, another gym, uh, talking online, just daily life when people ask me questions. And that is the guide. So if anyone ever asks me a question, hey, what supplement should I take? I'm just going to send them this video because it answers pretty much everything. So essentially comes down to creatine, maybe pre-workout, and protein powder. Did I get that wrong? Anyway, what else would you add for supplements? Anything I missed? Anything you want me to talk about? Let me know. I'll share my blatant opinion out into the world and I'd be happy to share that. But with that said, go ahead and check out one of the other videos on my channel. If you find either one of these interesting, go ahead and click it, check it out. I'll see you in that video. And until next time, uh, make sure you click the link, fitdadinnercircle slash program, fitdadinnercircle.com slash program. Anyway, talk to you next time.